microclimate classifications. All right, so let's kind of start from the top. Uh, if if you have a piece of paper on you and you want to kind of map this out a little bit so you can get our little chart, we, we call it the HD or the H diagram. And so if, if you had a piece of paper and you and you you draw a large letter H on your piece of paper, um, these H, the, the lines of the H represent barriers on the property. North is at the top of your page. And uh, in the bottom the bottom quadrant or the bottom quadrant of the H in the left hand corner, that is an A microclimate. And there's a, there'll be likely a wall or a tree to the to the west of it. And so that area, that A microclimate gets morning sun and it gets afternoon shade. It's on the south side of the property and it gets morning sun, afternoon shade. Now we move a little to the right of that and we're more into a full sun space. That's the B zone. Now we move a little bit further to the other edge of the property. So there's now another wall on the on the east side. So that is a C microclimate. That area gets shade from a wall on the west or on the, a shade from the wall or a tree on the east of it. So it gets morning shade. And then in the afternoon, it gets afternoon sun. There's often radiant heat coming off that wall. It's like what we talked about at the beginning of the show. If you're standing on the west side in the afternoon, you're feeling the sun heat and the baking return heat coming off the wall behind you. And so that's the C microclimate. That is the hottest zone. If you've got a solar oven, that's where you put it. And you get a nice afternoon bake. And those are pretty good. We used yeah. to do a lot of bread and solar ovens. Those are those are fun. Yeah, my, one of my crew guys, I just found a, I found this weird bag in one of our, our bins uh, on, in, in our truck. I was like, what's this thing? He's like, that's a solar oven. I was like, you guys are ingenious. I mean, my guys are out there literally. It's like, hey, I need a burrito for lunch. They stick the thing out, put the solar oven, throw the burrito in. It's cooked. You know, takes a bit, but awesome. Uh, So that's the C zone. Now we get to the north side of the property. Things change a bit. North side of the property typically has more shade. And uh, on that east side of the north part of the property, so there's an east wall. That is likely going to be a, um, what we call a D microclimate. So a D microclimate is one that, only gets late, late afternoon sun. And in, in all reality, it only gets the late afternoon sun in the summertime. It's like after 4 p.m. it's going to get sun. But in the wintertime, that particular D microclimate, which we kind of do like a grayish grayish color, that D microclimate gets absolutely no sun in the winter because the sun falls down further in the southern sky and that only is in the shade. It's in the shade 100% of the time in the winter, but in the summer, gets some real extreme heat for just a couple hours. And so that's a distinct microclimate. Only certain things grow well there and survive there long-term. And then as we come across the, the north part, we have the E microclimate, which is really more of the filtered light. So that's gonna be underneath uh, uh, trees, underneath things that still allow light to come through. You know it's an E microclimate because there's still enough light that it casts a shadow. You can wave your hand around and there's still a shadow under there. That E microclimate, one of the best places to grow your greens during the summertime. Filtered light, you know, like underneath even mesquite trees or Palo Verde trees, great E microclimates. And then on the far left of that, we've got in the little pocket where there's walls on the east and on the south, we've got a an F microclimate, and that is full shade. And so that never gets any sun. Nothing direct is getting into that area at all, and that's an F microclimate. Like we said, though, there's still some great things that can grow in those microclimates that are very edible. Even begonias actually love that space. Different varieties of jasmine love that space and grow well. Rosie, Rosie on the house, every Arizona homeowner's best friend. 